<laughs> What's going on, everybody? I'm at Permissionless 3 in Salt Lake City, Utah, the third iteration of Permissionless, and I happen to be wearing my DeFi Kingdoms shirt, DeFi Kingdoms hat, and I ran into the founders themselves of DeFi Kingdoms. So we have Frisky Fox and Starcat, and we're gonna dig into a little bit more about what makes DeFi Kingdoms happen and what's coming up for my favorite game on the blockchain. But to start off, I'd really like to know how you guys came up, like ins were inspired for the DeFi Kingdoms theme and had the idea to combine it with DeFi. Yeah, so we definitely love the nostalgic pixel art and we wanted to do, and we're super into like RPG style um, games. And we wanted to look into how to gamify things in the space and gamify DeFi. And so when we launched our decks, we like gamified it. So instead of just going to like going to just do normal trading, you're doing it at an NPC with a name and everything and a character. And so we just wanted to make it a lot more fun and e easy to digest and, and things like, um, like creating your LPs, like we kind of created symbols with those and like made them as seeds and planting seeds in a garden and everything like that. So yeah, do you want to add? Yeah, so all those things definitely. Um, I think for me it was also kind of like analogous in a little bit um, how the current state of the blockchain is still very nascent, you know? Mm -hmm. And so a lot of these styles of graphics like SNES, 8-bit, uh, 16-bit uh, stuff, it, it's like very early days for games. And so it's kind of like a herald or a throwback to that time period. And also a lot of the people that are in the space right now in crypto are our age and, and grew up playing these types of games. And so it's very like easily like accessible like really like nostalgic for those types of people as well yeah i love that you bring the nostalgic part up because that's actually what originally attracted me to it it brings me back to like the early nintendo days you know playing zelda and stuff like that and i just personally i love the art style like it's one of my favorite art styles available on the blockchain but you know so you have the fun looks and you have you know the game and everything that feels great but how do you balance the game and the DeFi aspect yeah, so the game we love. We're, the gameplay is super important to us. We created Hero NFTs um, as part of like the characters that you play. But the decentralized exchange, the Dex, it was like very important to kind of power the ecosystem because we've tokenized everything in the game. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No, it's fine. Just... So, so everything in the game is tokenized. So when you go on a quest and you get, um, you get go fishing a fishing quest and you get a bloater fish, that's tokenized and you can trade it. So you do that on our decks to do that. So that's kind of marrying gameplay and DeFi together. Right. It's kind of like seamless, right? Mm -hmm. And is that the goal to make it as seamless as possible, Frisky Fox? Yeah. No, it is um, 100. percent You know, uh, you see other projects out there that are trying to basically pick one, you know, they're like either we're some kind of a protocol that's doing DeFi or we're a game that's got maybe every now and then we'll mint an NFT for you if you earn something. But it's kind of like not a lot of overlap, but ours is, is trying to do both 100%, right? Like we are a game and we're all on chain. And so having the the like aspects of the blockchain at the very center of the game really enables a lot of really cool things with like in-game economy <laughs> and uh, just educating users that are very like new to blockchain about some of these very core concepts of the blockchain through this game. Yeah, I, I actually do love that because like it's a very simple introduction to DeFi and then if you want to get more involved with it, you can start providing to the LP and everything like that. So like I love how simple it is to get involved. You don't have to be a mastermind in DeFi in order to play DeFi Kingdoms, right? Uh, you know, I've been actually playing DeFi Kingdoms since 2021. So I've had upwards of like 400 plus heroes at one time, right? And the hardest part about that, especially in the early days, was time management. I could spend my full time, my full day, just managing my heroes, sending them out on quests and everything like that. And then they started to introduce external bots and tools like that to manage it. And I know the team wasn't a big fan of it, but have you guys done anything to solve the time management issues when you have a large pool of heroes? Yeah, so with, we started out where you had to do everything manually. And yes, like you said, with so many heroes, it's really difficult to um, just, but it's very time consuming. So we had released um, multi-questing um, and that helped to an extent, but you know, as people's um, 
their legions of heroes grow, they need even even better tools out there. So we actually recently, um, actually, when was it that we released it? Expeditions. Expeditions was like three, four months ago. Okay. Yeah. So we did release Expeditions, uh, and that um, allows people to get even more convenience with questing their heroes. Yeah. Uh, also, I'm. I wouldn't say I'm not a huge fan of bots. I I create so many bots in my old days. You know, like that's where it's at, and it's on the blockchain, and anybody can access the smart contracts. That's one of the cool things about the blockchain is we don't control it. Right. So hey, if if like you want to create your own interface and like interact with it this way or that way, it's it's open. So that's cool. Um, but we have really been trying to like really focus on making it easy to play, easy to manage. Tons of heroes. You have a ton of heroes because it's so easy to summon. It's actually a lot of fun to summon. So a lot of people have up in the thousands of heroes, you know, so creating those features that make it easy for them to do that. Holiday is another good one where if you use a Holiday smart account, which in our uh, app, like we're calling a DFK account, you can basically create that and then you don't have to have a sign thing every time you want to do any action. It'll just automatically do it for you. And so that really like made it a lot more akin to an actual game that's not like in your face that hey I'm on the blockchain everything you're doing is on the on chain even though it is yeah actually you know bringing up the holiday account that was my fiance's first introduction to blockchain right she saw nice. me playing DeFi kingdoms she was getting attracted to my heroes telling me I can't sell them and all these other <laughs> things like no don't summon with that one we're gonna save them I'm like we what do you mean we this is mine <laughs> so she went on right when holiday got started up and she made a smart account and now she's got like 60 70 heroes and playing every day and that's how she does it and now she's much more advanced in blockchain, but it did make it very simple and, like you said, not in your face. Right. So, big fan of that. Especially, you know, got it. It's a good way to get in the normies, right? At the end of the day, that's our goal in crypto. It is. It is. You know, <laughs> onboarding people. Yes. But I actually would like to share how DeFi Kingdoms is like an amazing tool to onboard people onto crypto because we've kind of seen how there's people who play DeFi Kingdoms they end up becoming an expert in crypto because they're exposed to it in such an easy and easy to understand manner. Yeah, I think that's huge and I really applaud you guys on making it so seamless and like possible to introduce new people that have never interacted with crypto before because it gets them interested. They've got these heroes that are actually worth something and then hey, they accidentally summon a mythic and you know, now they got a hero that's worth a couple hundred bucks or something, right? You know, so that gets them excited and wanting to dive more into crypto. Granted, we want them to stay in DeFi Kingdoms. Have too. you summoned a mythic hero? Oh, you better believe it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, speaking about all these heroes and everything, I've been really busy this year traveling around the world to all these different conferences. I'm not as active as I used to be in my DeFi Kingdoms days when I was just staying at home all year long. But I've been hearing a lot about the influence system that recently came out for the heroes. Can you tell me a little bit more about that and like what that actually adds to the game? Yeah, so the influence system, it's actually specifically on Metis in our PVP um, feature, the DFK Coliseum. And it's our, um, in the realm called Sundered Isles. And the influence system, it's its incredible. I, I would love, Fox is really good at explaining it, so I'm going to have to <laughs> go into it. Well, I wish I could have like Hubert here or something. He designed it, but uh, you know, it's a really cool like way to basically put a value in game or not a value but like a score in game to heroes based on their attributes and, and like stats and like uh, how many summons they have left and what's their rarity there's a lot of different things with our heroes they've got so many different traits that are going on each hero is like really just unique and so um, some heroes you know are, are like really rare and they've got really rare uh, stats and traits and higher level as you play with them and level them up so with those heroes, they're actually more influential in our game because of those stats. And so over on Metis, you're actually able to have them spectate on these other like matches that are happening and use their influence to basically uh, able to like place a vote and say, I think this person's going to win or I think this person's going to win. And then if they win, you're able to get like a share of some of those rewards back too. Oh. So if you have more influence, then you're able to get more shares of like the rewards out of those matches. Um, and it's really, really cool and fun because uh, if you have like thousands and thousands of heroes, you have a lot of influence in our game. You're influential, right? So like, stake them there and start to spectate, start to vote, and like actually get involved with it, and you can earn things from it. Awesome. So you mentioned staking the heroes. Now, is there a lockup period when you stake your heroes? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's part of the influence too. I think is like the longer uh, that that you can have them be locked up for, um, it'll give you more influence for that as well. So if you want to just have like the minimum amount, then you'll get some. 
but if it's for longer you get more. It's kind of like a curve sort of like model with that and it's similar to how we do our S jewel and uh, C jewel in game for like proposal voting and things like that as well, but it's using NFTs now instead of just our ERC20 token. Oh, awesome. Okay. Now one last question on that part then. So like, you know, you lock up your heroes and you know, obviously you still want to quest with them, you still want to summon, can you still do that though? No. No? Okay. <laughs> Not in this case. You can still do some things. Um, they're actually earning experience from oh, this really? lockup as they're going. So they're not just sitting there. Uh, they're participating in spectating here, and they'll earn XP for that, and you're able to level them up while they're staked. And so, like, they're still usable, but, like, questing and things like that, they're not doing that. you got to choose. You, it's like, do you want your heroes to be doing this, or hunts, or spectating, or combat? Like, there's a lot of different choices you can do with your assets, and you have to be like, okay, you're going to be doing this because this is your stats, and you're going to be doing this and just kind of choose and be strategic about that. Love it. That's awesome. So many different options to do with the heroes. You know, I mean, back in my day, it was basically just questing right at the beginning. And now, like you said, the hunts, the, the PvP, the um, staking, I mean, what are you going to do? You know, I've yeah. got 400 heroes. I may as well just split them all up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, and you can divvy them up, see which one they're best optimized for. And what we're saying, everything that you guys have been saying is increased utility for our hero NFTs and that's our main priority in DeFi Kingdoms because the hero NFTs are what basically powers um, the whole entire game. Yes. Owning a hero is, is central to DeFi Kingdoms as a player. Yeah. You can't get much done without heroes, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, you guys mentioned PvP, and I mean we've been screaming for PvP for years now. It's finally here. So what does that mean for the game and its players and how is it going to be released? Yeah, so I mean, yeah, everybody's been asking when PvP, and it's finally here. I, everyone's been loving. It. I've been seeing some incredible like matchups and combinations, and even some like cheese strategies as well. And like we love to see that. And like before, it was very linear. You know, you're fighting enemies with in hunts, and it, you know, you could win or get earn rewards through that, which was great. But now you get to actually match up and fight against your friends and against you know anyone else and it's just i i think it just really adds to the fun of everything because interacting with other people is is also another beauty of defi kingdoms definitely yeah also you know like we've had duels for a long time that was our like everybody has these heroes and they've been leveling up and trying to make the best here possible and they want to fight people with it. It's like, I want to use this. So duels scratched that itch a little bit, but it was kind of like a band-aid until we got our huge um, strategic uh, uh, combat system built, which which is very involved and, and it's just so in-depth. So it's just really, I think a lot of people are just blown away by how many options there are and trying to figure out the best team. And as we like release new uh, classes and things like that, every time it's going to just really change that up each time too. So. I'm just really excited about it, and it, it is actually live right now over on Metis. Um, so, like, we just launched it last week, actually. Holy crap. Um, and, and it's just, you know, you can actually just uh, head over there and just kind of, like, try it and check it out. Absolutely. I, I know I'm going to. But um, on that note, like, you know, with PvP being here, and, you know, there's lots of assets in DeFi Kingdoms, from the, the items that you get from questing to the weapons that are out now. How are all the different assets utilized in PvP within DeFi Kingdoms? Yeah, definitely. So we have equipment, and what's interesting about equipment is those you were able to get those from hunts in Crystal Vale, and so people have been bridging them over um, and we had to create that technology and, and partner up with Layer Zero to do that. And it's been um, a, like, I don't, I don't know how to explain it. I, let's, let's have you get into that. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's uh, see, I, I can't read your mind on that one, but you know, it, it's, it's amazing. Um, we have pets, we have equipment, as uh, she was saying just now, you know, we, we have all these ways that you can improve your heroes. And being able to bridge them actually at the same time as your heroes is a very new thing. We have a very cross-chain game. We're on Kaya, our own chain, uh, and then also on Metis. And so a lot of our gameplay involves moving your heroes from one place to another. So you can do quests here, 
you can have them fight over there. Um, and being able to bridge your hero along with everything attached to them all in one transaction is a huge thing too. Um, a lot of other bridges can only do like one thing at a time. Ours can do up to 15 heroes at a time. Wow. And um, so if your hero has NFTs attached to them, because each equipment and pet is, is also a like NFT with its own sets. So right. you got all this like stuff that's basically creating this like synergy that, that creates this amazing hero and so really each hero is just so unique from all these different things. I think there's probably I think at one point we actually calculated how many possible combinations of, of like stats and traits and it's like more atoms than there are in the universe so it's, <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah, no, it's crazy. The different abilities that heroes can have and how it can all roll and everything like that. And I have moved heroes between chains and stuff, but not since the bundling aspect. And that's absolutely phenomenal. It does take a good bit of time to move one at a time, you know. But to be able to bundle them together and move up to 15 at a time, that's a lifesaver. I mean, it's not even about the gas because gas is so low with every chain DeFi Kingdoms is on. It's just the time aspect. You know, Metis is the newest chain that DeFi Kingdoms is on, if I'm not mistaken. But so. And that's where Coliseum lives. And how is Coliseum powered on the Metis chain? <laughs> smart contracts. I mean, it, it's it's all smart contracts. We have all, almost all of our logic um, is on chain. We also have this really amazing uh, combat engine that uh, was written by Beetle Dude and, and and like others as well. But that basically is creating like a hybrid approach where you you start your combat on the blockchain, and then there's uh, a lot of the actual like. Uh, actions that you're doing are over in our combat engine and then at the end it'll like have the results get sent back and you get submitted um, earning rewards and then spectator rewards and XP and all that type of stuff as well so it's really this very seamless experience where um, you're able to have on-chain and uh, like this really cool in-depth engine that's basically working seamlessly we've got really good API too that's really powering it all and uh, that's uh, Pinecone on our team that built that and it's just amazing so there's a lot of moving parts that come together to make this seamless experience and, and we've had three years to sort of like learn how to be really good at that and we are really good at that now. So no. yeah. Very skilled team for sure. Every time you bring up a different feature, it's a different person that's making a very awesome and powerful tool. So I really applaud you on building this epic team together, you know. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> did you have anything you wanted to add to that or? Well, as part of um, through all of this through Metis, there's also an increase in marketing efforts as well because we want to really amp, amp up and hype, create more hype around it because we, for a very long time, we've been very focused on the build and very focused on our developers and, you know, people are just, it, it, marketing is something that we do have lacked in the past, but we see how important PvP is and we want to amplify that as much as possible because so much hard work has, has gone into it and we want to really celebrate that. No, I love that. I mean, you know, despite market conditions or despite, you know, past issues with other chains, you guys have kept your head down and continued to build all these new features and utilities, uh, different chains, everything. And I know every time you move to another chain, it's a whole set of problems or a whole new uh, code base. So, you know, it's a it's a lot of work. It's and a whole set of solutions. That's, you know, that's part of what DeFi Kingdoms is, is innovating and figuring out all the solutions possible. And I, I feel like that's where the talent comes from. That's what really makes our Team. Really, really amazing. Absolutely. I love that you said that because it's not about the problems, it's about the solutions. You know, we're, we don't find problems, we find solutions. That's the best way to do it. You know, but uh, one of my big questions, because I've got all these heroes and I rent them out so that other people can summon with them because, you know, maybe I just don't like the pairing or whatever, right? But with PvP here now, I'm imagining there's going to be tournaments and things like that. Will I be able to rent out my heroes to people to fight with or is that out of the question? I know there's there's a lot of uh, plans we have on that front. I, I can't say a lot because we haven't announced a lot of it yet. Um, but but yeah, those are definitely things that that we are actually t actively like thinking about and uh, actively talking about a lot. And there's some work being done in that front as well. Uh, but I think you sort of hit something really important because like there's so many new things that come about with this uh, this uh, combat stuff that we've launched where it allows for like tournaments it allows for like sponsoring things and spectating and a lot of players that are coming in this will be their first experience ever playing dfk so a lot of them are actually experiencing for the first time over on metis now and so we've also moved a lot of other things to support it over there including like our like nft marketplaces um and like all kinds of like onboarding and on ramps and things like that um so really we're trying to create a full featured 
uh, combat experience there where players can come in and experience for the first time and say, hey, this is fun. I want to I want to try it out and then have the ability to, you know, like really easily say, OK, I don't have a team yet, but I can like, you know, like I could like rent one or I could like use uh, some of our promo things that we're going to be doing. Um, just to try it out. And then once they get addicted, which they will, then, you know, they'll be like, I want to get some heroes myself. I want to start creating heroes and summoning them, leveling them up. And then, oh, there's these other realms. And, and it just really opens up the whole, like, universe from this one point. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think that's a it's a good way to get people in because, hey, if you can rent a hero for a day for, like, a couple dollars or something like that, and maybe you pay, place, like, fifth in a tournament or something, and I don't know, you don't even have to win a lot. But at that point, you're like, oh, man, I, this was pretty fun. I want to get into this more. Next thing you know, you're browsing the marketplace and, and buying heroes. That's exactly and, right. I mean, I've been saying it for a long time, but, you know, like, you look at other uh, older, um, sort of, like, older games out there, like Axie Infinity is one, for example, that started out basically just with combat, and it, it exploded because everyone loves combat, you know? It's, it's actually fun, and, like, you can earn from, like, winning and stuff like that, and it's, it's this amazing recipe for success. Definitely. Yeah, and that's where it, it segues so naturally to the multi-chain aspect of DeFi Kingdoms, because we have PvP on Metis, and then if you want to then um, do some questing you can or hunts, you go over to Crystal Veil vale to do that, or if you want to do other quests and um, get other types of um, like tokenized assets or items for crafting or this and that, you can hop over to Serendel on Kaya. And so it's just, it's, it really unifies the multi-chain aspect of things. So it's not like whenever we move to a different realm, it's not like we ever forget about the other one or we're just like the other one, we're, you know, just um, focusing on efforts um, and just ditching the next one and into a new one and keep hopping through other, ch other chains. We're always thinking about how they all, the chains work together as an ecosystem unified. Definitely. Mm -hmm. And on that note, you know, I, I, I have to ask, will we be seeing another realm soon, anytime soon here? You're, you're trying to get us to leak some alpha. Oh, definitely. <laughs> this channel is called Alpha First, you know, so i yeah, got so it. Yeah, so I'll explain that a little bit for those that are new, but, you know, like, we started out on Harmony uh, way back in the day with a entire realm, and, and then we expanded to Avalanche Ecosystem with an entirely new realm. Um, and so we've got two realms, basically. Uh, we ended up actually moving the first one to Kaya, um, which is a lot better. <laughs> and... Uh, we have two like huge realms with with just all kinds of stuff in there, and with this expansion over on the Metis, it's not a, it's it's its own realm. Um, it, it has a really really amazing feature, um, but we have two full new realms that that are still in the wings, you know, sort of waiting up there, and we basically built you know less than half of our game at this point and there's a lot more to come so everyone is always excited like when's that new realm because when we launch a new realm we launch uh, some new classes too and sort of like the way it works with our heroes is they're able to uh, combine and create like new advanced classes as well so it opens up just a lot of new stuff and like amazing content so I'm excited about it. everyone's excited about it we're not gonna say yet <laughs> what it is but stay tuned well, we just, we want um, what, like, the new chain would be or the new realm would be. It needs to be a chain that's very user-friendly, yeah. low um, low cost to the user, and so that's that's something that we're always um, looking for, and it's and be able to handle high transaction counts as well, and so that's, that's our priority. Yeah, no, and that's a huge priority, because if I'm not mistaken, DeFi Kingdoms does more transactions than anybody on Avalanche, and, you know, so how, people got to be able to afford to do that. It's got to happen fast. Fast, and how do you intend to make sure that happens then? No, yeah, it's true. We've always tried to push the envelope. We've actually uh, crashed a bunch of chains in our history. <laughs> and and trying to push what's possible on the blockchain is what it's all about. Uh, that's what makes the uh, frontier uh, come into reality, you know. So we are all, all about trying to push that. And we love all of our partners. We've really worked with them to improve uh, architecture and like infrastructure to really push what's possible on their chains and they've been really good as well. So huge like shout out to like Avalanche and to Metis and, and um, uh, Kaya as well. Like we have been pushing them and, and it's been really improving uh, the experience for everyone. Yeah, so how often do these chains, chains come uh, back to you and they're like, guys, we really need to figure this out before you keep pushing all these updates? <laughs> no, there's 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 been a lot of times, honestly, and, and like we've had to pivot sometimes. Um, we've had to be like, okay, like we are a uh, sort of like a victim of our own success uh, sometimes, where it's just like, 
okay, we've got so much happening, we need to figure out new strategies, new ways to optimize, and actually a huge uh, shout out to all of the builders on our team that optimized all of our contracts very, very heavily for this new launch over on the Metis, and, and it's like 10 times more efficient now than it was before, so, so that's about awesome. That. Very awesome. So with all these other chains and everything, and I think you mentioned it briefly a little bit ago, but uh, you know, you're constantly bridging between to do these different actions. And it's very fast, it's very efficient, and you know, like you mentioned, the bundling. So who's powering that? So yeah, um, we have really good uh, cross-chain like messaging partners. We use uh, Synapse for our like ERC20 tokens and things like for like Jewel and for like Ethereum and uh, Bitcoin and USDC and all that type of stuff. We also use them for our Hero and Pet Bridge uh, for Crystal Vale to Serendale, which is our two original realms. In this expansion, um, well. On the original one, we also use Layer Zero uh, for our item bridge okay. across those two realms. And then in this expansion, we decided to go all in on like Layer Zero because they have amazing technology. And we actually rebuilt our hero bridges and like equipment bridges and all that using Layer Zero. And it's been amazing to work with them. Um, we really uh, pioneered a lot of stuff there with like trying to send as much into like one message as possible and having it be like uh, dynamic as well so it'll kind of increase like the gas um, as you add more into that like little boat that's uh, sort of being sent over. That's how I envision it is like okay stick your heroes in a boat at our docks and then sail over to this other chain and then that's where you are. So yeah like Layer Zero has been amazing and, and uh, we've also sort of looked into a few others as well um, especially on like the L1 front with like the cross chain messaging that they have there. So. Yep. Awesome. Yeah, definitely picked a good partner because it's very effective. You know, I, I bridge all the time being an avid user of blockchain and it's one of the best bridging experiences. And I like how you did the, the analogy with the boat because, you know, it's great. You go to the dock and yes, it says bridge your heroes. But yeah, think of it like a little boat. You're sending them on a boat and then send the squad over to, you know, fight with a war or something, right? We even have a PVP background where people are, the heroes are fighting on a boat. So <laughs> some are like fighting on their way through the bridge and everything, <laughs> so to speak. <laughs> That's awesome, very awesome. And you know, I'm also a big junkie of like cosmetics and everything. And I know you guys have Vizzies. I own, I own karate geese. I think I own a big redhead. I, you know, there's different things I own, but uh, I know a lot of times you guys do them in partnership with other people, and it, which is a great marketing initiative. Are there any new ones that uh, came out recently or maybe they're coming out that people can look forward to? Yes, so on Wednesday, a couple days ago, we um, released a Visage with Hercules. And Hercules is a DEX on Metis, and we partnered with them. Um, and it's it's actually something brand new where you can put on basically a Visage cosmetic as a muscle suit. <laughs> so your heroes will look really buff and they'll look super beefy <laughs> and swole. And what's interesting is, you know, before our Vizzies kind of were like, like putting on a hat or something, but these ones, what's special is that it matches with the hero's skin color. Okay. So now that kind of opens up a lot of really cool opportunities of like, maybe people can have like different hairstyles or people can have like different um, eye color related something. And so it's, we even have a, um, on DeFi Kingdoms, it's they're called Plague Touched Hero, and it's we had released those in Halloween, and that's where their skin color was green. And on top of that, I, I maybe people get an idea of where I'm going. Um, we have a um, equipment item that's a pair of pants, and it's a purple pair of pants. And so when you get this specific combination of hero with the pants and that green color um, skin, it looks like the Hulk. <laughs> and so we have um, it's it's super cool. There's so really a lot of fun um, combinations that that are available through these cosmetics and partnering with people is is and people in the ecosystem is such a great way to um, do some marketing and exposure and and people love it definitely rising tide raises all ships right so collaboration is key especially in the blockchain space you know it's a good way to get exposure to other people and uh, cross-pollination I believe is the path to the future really 
Yeah, and just in crypto space in general, DeFi Kingdoms is all about collaborating with people. We're never really in competition with any, anybody. We're really about lifting each other up. And we want to support other people in their growth. And we know that by lifting others, we're also like lifting the whole space because we all need that in crypto. And it's, it's just, we have this really wholesome DeFi Kingdoms bubble that we want to bring everybody in and join in with us. Definitely, definitely. I love that outlook. Uh, but I don't want to take too much more of you guys' time, so I just have a couple last questions. Uh, what are there, If there are any that are announced that you guys can talk about, what upcoming features or expansions are you guys looking most forward to? Again, we're getting back to that alpha first aspect. Right, right. It's <laughs> like uh, I had... You know, like uh, like we have the alpha police over there that's like watching everything I'm saying. <laughs> so uh, we have to be careful. But you know, there's if if like you look at our original like roadmap, you know, like we had a lot of the things that have now been built. Uh, one of the ones that was a long time coming was this uh, combat stuff that we're doing now. Uh, there's one outstanding one that that hasn't really been done yet that I oftentimes think a lot about, and I've, I'm personally really excited about, and it's lands. Um, so we have these like land NFTs on our world map that um, you actually can own land over here in DFK. Um, and uh, there's all kinds of things that they do right now, but there's a lot more they'll do in the future. Um, and a lot of that uh, is, is still just sort of like being planned for. Um, not a lot has actually started on it yet, but I personally, I'm really, really excited about lands. Like that's, that's like the one that I've been super excited about from the very, very start. So that's a huge one, um, and I have a lot of like uh, proof of concept things that I built over the years about stuff we can do with land, and um, I'm stoked. Yeah, awesome. Let's see what what am I excited about? Um, it's not exactly a feature, but it's kind of more so the lore, the lore of DeFi Kingdoms. We have a lot of really cute, cute and colorful NPCs, and they all have, like, we hint. It's <laughs> the bloater. Our bloater. <laughs> um, we hint at um, a lot of their personalities and, like, a little bit of backstory with all of them, but um, being able to um, guide and put people through a journey uh, in DeFi Kingdoms and the lore and through a story is something that I'm very excited about. And so uh, as part of that, it would be updating like the user experience of it and pulling and just like, yeah, guiding people through a story um, because right now it's pretty open world. Right. It's like you get, you land right into the world map when you enter a realm and you kind of got to like explore, click around and explore everything. And honestly, for some people, it's really fun. But for some other people, they kind of need a little bit of guidance. Yeah. So to have a story weaved through that and to be guiding people through the experience is, is something that I'm very excited for. And we're working on that because we know it's needed. Definitely. You know, I think that's actually a big part that a lot of people may overlook at times because what it does is it gets gamers or players emotionally attached to the game, right? Like they love the background story. They love how, you know, maybe the Coliseum has some broken parts, why it happened, this prior war, whatever, right? Like it just, it allows you to get more submersed in the game itself. Exactly. We even have some uh, specific items that people have earned that uh, we, we want to have that's I won't say exactly what it is but it's like a page of something that is in people's inventory I think I have time. seven of them <laughs> yeah so like we we have plans for that for sure and we want to get it out there because I know everyone's been very patient with, with that so awesome awesome well I want to thank you guys first off for your time I know you're very busy important people again we've got Frisky Fox one of the founders of DeFi Kingdoms. And then, of course, we've got Starcat, another founder of DeFi Kingdoms. And you want to remind people what your title is as well? Director of Digital. Director of Digital. I love it. Such a good name. If people want to learn more about DeFi Kingdoms and get involved in the game itself, where, where should they go to get that done? Yeah, I mean, so obviously DeFiKingdoms.com. And then if um, you guys are so welcome to check out our Discord, everyone is super welcome there. Like, if you don't know anything about DeFi Kingdoms and you want to just get started, hop into the Discord. We have moderators that are super helpful. We have community members that will get you started from square one. If you don't even have a MetaMask wallet, they can help you, guide you through the entire process. Um, people are super helpful. They'll, they'll hold your hand. And, like, we even have people on our team who are in our Discord as well. Um, the development team who can totally help out who are in discord as well that's awesome yep 
everything she said, you know, like we're really friendly. We have an amazing uh, community. I think we have the best one in the whole space. Like they're just really excited and, and supportive and amazing. And, and honestly, like they're really helpful. Like if they see like a new face, they'll be like trying to help you with all kinds of stuff. I have a QR code here that you could maybe pause it and uh, see if you can scan that. And that will take you to all the places you need. Awesome. And if you can't scan it, that's no problem. We will also be dropping the links to both the website and the Discord in the description of this video. But last but not least, we got to get a bullish going. So on three. Okay. Bullish! <laughs> well, thank you guys so much for your time. It was a pleasure talking with you. And keep up the amazing work. Thank you.